Yo. 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 The man is back. The man, the myth, the legend. The radical souls himself. Ethan, welcome back, my boy. It's been a long Ethan, time. Shouldn't have left this one day. But it's okay. For, for Rody, man. Are you pronouncing it? Alright, right. so you're excused. You're excused. Just don't let it happen again. Okay? I'm a, I'm a Florida man now and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He is. Uh, Next thing you know, in a couple weeks, you know what I'm saying? He got the grills in at the bottom. You know what I'm saying? Have a fuck shirt and everything. Yep. All that. Yo, but guys, welcome back. It is Tuesday, November 24th. We're back here with another episode of the Radical Souls Podcast, episode 35. I'm Daniel. I'm Chris. And I'm Ethan. In case y'all forgot, because you know it's been a while. <laughs> In case y'all forgot to subscribe. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. All the support we get is needed. You feel me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Guys, me and Ethan are repping it. Memphis Grizzlies. Come on, folks. Vancouver Grizzlies. You didn't even see the V up there. And we got the Knicks. Yo, NBA free agency has been crazy. And I was not expecting the craziness to happen. We definitely got to get into this, talk about our teams a little bit, talk about the overall NBA and who our favorites are right now. And we definitely got to do a little recap of the NFL week. It was a very weird weekend in the sense of uh, our game picks. And I'm pretty sure I think like one of us finished 500 and everybody else was like below and shit. So we're going to have to get into that a little bit. And I wanted to bring up an interesting topic because we have lost a great rookie this season. And I wanted to talk about... Which field is the deadliest field right now in the NFL? I'm sorry, Ethan, we have to, bro. <laughs> Let's go. Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> so where, where y'all want to start? Y'all, y'all want to start with this field or y'all want to start with the NBA? I'm a little hyped about the NBA, so it's up to y'all. I'm a little hyped about the NBA, too. There's a lot of deals going on. There's a lot of people getting signed, a lot of... Different things going on. I don't know if you want to start there, start or up. we can start. You know, what I'm saying we can start with some tragic news with Joe Burrow. I mean, it's up to you guys. You know I'm saying let's start with NBA. Let's start with good news. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yo, so where, where y'all want to start? Yo, it's been a crazy weekend. I, we've all been away. Chris was down in Dallas, you know, handling his stuff down there. I was up in Buffalo picking up my cousin from college. Ethan was in Florida doing his stuff. Yeah, we were all like blowing up the chat, like, "Yo, this just went down. This went down. This went down." Like, yeah. <laughs> It wow. was crazy. Montre- Yo, I think the craziest one for me was Montrez Harrell to the Lakers. Yeah, I agree with that as well. That's going to be a big uh, big difference on that team, especially like now with Dwight Howard out the way. I mean, he steps in big time. He's like a, a way better center than Dwight Howard. Sorry. So. Yeah, I don't even know if they use him off the bench. Do you really use him off the bench? Who? Yeah. Montrez Harrell? Yeah. Could Anthony Davis play the four? Oh, okay. Well, you start Would you use him? Would you use him off the bench though? For for this group, yes. Because you got A B and LeBron. You don't you need a bench player to score. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So so who do you you start A D at the four or you started him at the five and bringing in Kuzma to start? I don't like Kuzma, so I'm gonna say you leave him on the bench, but they're probably gonna do that. Yeah. I, the only reason I say start Kuzma is I feel like they want to trade him, so they might try to get his like trade stock up a little bit by starting him and make him look a little true. bit better around AD and LeBron a little bit maybe. True. Yeah, true. And then, you know, they could do what your Thunder have been doing, Ethan, all, all season, just trade it for first-round picks. I'm surprised you haven't traded some of your fans for some second-rounders or something. <laughs> we're going to get we're gonna get there. I'm not, I'm just, all right, so you don't want to start with that yet? All right. Uh, we have Bam Adebayo. With a extension, Brandon Ingram, the Air Fox, all recent, doing their extension with their teams. Um, yeah, well, the, Donovan the Fox. Did the Aaron Fox get paid though? He got paid. And so did uh, yeah. Mitchell. Mitchell got the max deal, didn't he? Donovan Mitchell yeah. got that. Tatum. Tatum. Yeah, all the all the youngins ever getting locked up. I mean, that don't really change much because, in my opinion, I think that's just really. So it should be ha- should be happening. So yeah. So either way, I still think they're. Tradable assets if one of them gets a little disgruntled. Yeah. So, especially because our teams are both in the position to uh, trade for stuff now. 
Yeah. Uh, what else we had? We had. Um... Ethan does not agree. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't want to talk about that too. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get into that. Don't worry, yo. What y'all think about Boogie Cousins, yo? When I saw that, I was like, yo, is this their way of trying to keep this team together? Boogie Cousins going to the Rockets for a year. I love it, honestly. The Marcus Cousins, Westbrook, and Harden, Chris. What, you think that's working out? <laughs> I can see a Boogie Cousins and uh, Harden. But if Westbrook doesn't go, dog, I don't know. I don't see it. Can't see it. I just think he's that much of a toxic player. Fair enough. And, I mean, it's not like Boogie Cousins is the biggest team player anyway, so. <laughs> so three jocks on one team? Man. Yeah, exactly. Three jocks on one team. Like, I don't know if that's going to do too well. So. They'll probably blow that up. <laughs> probably. Quick. Easy. Um, Steven Adams got the extension from his new team, the New Orleans Pelicans, two years, 35 mil. Um, Ethan, can we please just get into it, bro? You, you want to push it away, but... Let's we'll get into it. Let's we'll get into it. All right. So, yo, what, what's your team thinking of doing, bro? Because y'all got how many first-round picks now? Like 17 until 2026? We, we have 17, yeah, 17 20, till 2026. And, like, I want to say, like, eight second-rounders till 2025 is ridiculous. And there was one picture that had all of our players this is the past season. Everybody got new jerseys. Tip shot. You only kept yeah. shot. That's it. I mean, yo, it, it, it makes sense in the sense of, like, I see what you guys are, like, what they're trying to do. They're trying to get back what they had with that three core thing that they had going, the little four, five player core. And it's a little bit easier now with them picks because let's just say for whatever reason, um, what's a good example we can use? It. Donovan Mitchell. He just says, "Yo, I'm done with this. I don't want to be here. Somebody get me the hell out of here." The Thunder can give like be like, "Yo, here's two picks. They have their own picks still, and if their own pick is better than the picks they can give up, it's gonna be a quick rebuild for you." Yeah, this this whole yeah. thing is just a rebuild because at least next season is a big off season, which I, they probably understand. But what attraction do we have, George Hill? Like, it's, it's not looking <laughs> good. Yeah. yeah. So, question: Now that this is just flying through the board here, do you think Ingram is worth max money? Because that's what he got for the Pelicans: five years, one fifty-eight. The potential's there, but it's like, has he proven that he deserves that money yet? Not really. He no. had that one good season last year, and things could change quick. Like we've seen it so many times. Look at um, what's this dude's name? Tyreek Evans. Like he. Had that one great rookie season, and after that, he just fell off completely. Yeah. It happens way too many times more than often. Okay, okay. And I was talking to Dan prior to the podcast about Bam about buy you getting the, the max deal. You really think he's worth that? For that group, I say yes. One sec- Yo, he can get up to 195. That's a lot, dog. It's because Bam could do it all. He's a great defender. Yeah. He can pass the ball. He could like he can't shoot the best. He's slow he though, bro. I mean, like he's not. He's a good defender. I'll give you that. And he's good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's. I don't, I don't know. He's worth max money though. I don't know. You know. You know what the thing though is. You got to think about it like this from the business aspect. You got to sign them now while you can for the max extension before they hit restricted free agency and they're asking for 225 mil because Anthony Davis just got 300 mil. Like, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. So from that standpoint, like, it makes sense. But I, I don't know. Bam, he's shown the potential. Like, he he could be a great player. He could. He could. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I'll, I'll stop being such a fucking hater. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Chris, how you feel about the Knicks, bro? How you feeling? How you how – you... Oh, they signed Austin Rivers. I saw that. They saw yeah, they signed a bunch of n- no names. I'm I like it. They're all small deals. They're all under ten mil around that. That's you know that little cap. I like it, bro. I mean, they hired uh one of uh what would they they hired a bench coach, wasn't it? Like a couple hours ago. <sighs> I could look through my phone. It was something Darian something. You had uh, to see that. I did. Damn, I just Darian Elman. There we go. Yeah, they brought in another uh, coach. So I mean, that's a like, I've never heard of Jit. So I don't know. He played for Boston's G League, I guess. Yeah. So I like that they're doing small deals. Nothing ridiculous. 
nothing over the top. How do you oh, feel about it? I'm so happy, dog. After seeing what Gordon Hayward got from Charlotte, I was like, no, no, mm-mm. Mm-mm. no, 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 hell no, 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 I refuse, no, no. I was thinking that when they signed him, I was like, yo, thank God we didn't get him for that amount of money because that would have been bad. Especially because, like, all right, let's, let's be realistic. The Hornets have a little bit more pieces right now than the Knicks. So Gordon yeah. Hayward might have a better impact on the Hornets than he can on the Knicks. And then you're locking yourself up all that money for next season. That's supposed to be a crazy not only draft but free agency and then the year after that. And the same thing happened with me with Fred Van Vliet. You remember for the longest, I said, yo, I do not want to sign Fred Van Vliet for no crazy money. He ends up getting like $20 million a year. And I was like, nah, 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 thank God. So, Leon Rose is doing right. I mean, yo, that trade that he did for Ed Davis was crazy. Like, he literally traded this dude away for three second-round picks without even, like, making him touch the floor for one second. Like, literally just got him with two picks, second-round picks, and then just traded him out for one more. I'm like, yo, that's how we come in? I like this. Yeah. It gives you more assets. Uh, Austin Rivers is on a great deal. It's only um, three years, 10 mil, 10.4 mil, something like that. And it's um, it's not fully guaranteed. It's one year guaranteed. So, you know yeah. any contender is going to be like, yo, we need Austin Rivers. And you could trade for, like, their low first-round pick or even a second-round pick or future first, like, whatever. At the end of the day, you're getting assets out of it. And that's basically all the trade that they made for all those players and all the signings that they made for most of their players. It's people yeah. that you can potentially trade for more assets in case, you know, Donovan Mitchell decides, yo, Rudy Gobert out here coughing and touching shit again. I don't like that. And um, <laughs> we trade for him. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I really like all the deals they're putting together. I mean, nothing really – it's been nothing really Knicks fashion this year, which is really – it's a good thing, man. It's a sign of relief. <laughs> yeah, it's a sign of relief that, you know, maybe a new future's coming without dumb fucking signings and trades. So Maybe you guys are not reaching – like I just stay no, I'm good with not reaching. I don't think we need to reach. We've reached before, and that hasn't paid off. So, dog. Oh my! And God. I, I really, and honestly, I really like that Austin Rivers deal. Yo, three years, ten mil, one you know year saying? guaranteed. Like, so you're pretty much giving him nothing. You're giving a year. You know, he's not that bad. I mean, he's not the greatest, but he's not a bad player. I think he he helps out. So he's a nice little compliment. For three yeah. shooting and a little bit of scoring. That's all that yeah. matters. Yo. That's all we needed. Complimentary pieces and hopefully uh, the Knicks and Thunder with all the assets that they start to build up can turn it around and start going back to uh, the top of the league again. Yeah. Hope. Yes, sir. Who's, who's your favorite? Go. I was about to say that. <laughs> who's your favorite this year for the championship right for now? For the championship? Right now, yo. Let's call this early. Because I, I got the okay. Lakers. I got the Lakers repeating. I got the Lakers too. I got the Lakers too. <laughs> I felt like uh, I was gonna get some judgment for that. So I'm nah, 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 nah. Because the thing is, like, <laughs> yo, the Lakers just added the Six Man of the Year and Dennis Schroeder, who was like a runner-up in Six Man of the Year. So you got yeah. those two pieces off the bench. You got the whole team that's pretty much together. You lost Rondo, but like, what do you? Let's be real. What do you need Rondo for? What the like, fuck are you losing Rondo for? Anyways. Yeah. And then the Clippers, like, all they did was add Ibaka, who I guess is a better complimentary piece for the Clippers, but after what I saw last year, I'm kind of like, yeah, I got to figure that out. And they saw Marcus Moore. Marcus Moore is just a crazy deal, too. I was like, oh, nah. Nope. Yeah. And <laughs> honestly, if it, ain't, if it ain't the Lakers, it's the Bucks, bro, with Drew Holiday. That they added that piece to it, I mean, yeah. that'll help, dog. You no, know, look, I'm going to say it now, and y'all can say whatever y'all want about me, as long as it ain't Brooklyn, I don't give a fuck who wins the championship. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're one of the favorites now too One of the top five favorites If last time I checked Until Kyrie blows out his ankle Or some shit is out for like three months Comes <laughs> back Hurts his shoulder For like one month Like it's Let's be real yo It's not even that I'm trying to wish injuries on the man But like He's kind of helping my case When he gets hurt every single season Like I'm so glad the Knicks didn't draft him Like I'll draft him Wow Trade for him I was so tight When he didn't sign him Yeah And I was so tight When we didn't trade for him Out of Cleveland and I'm seeing it year by year, and I'm like, yo, thank God we dodged a bullet because this dude could not stay on the court, ever. I was born with glass bones and paper skin. Every morning, I break my legs, and every afternoon, I break my arms. At night, I lie awake in agony until my heart attacks put me to sleep. Yeah, that's facts. That's facts. So, so. Brooklyn, kick rocks, my nigga. Y'all not winning crap out here, all right? <laughs>
<laughs> Any uh, bold statements for the, the year? Obi Toppin, rookie of the year. Calling that shit right now. He better average. He better average. He better average eighteen and eight. I like the enthusiasm. The enthusiasm. The enthusiasm. I can't even speak. I'm having a mini stroke here. I like the enthusiasm, uh, Dan. But I don't know about rookie of the year. Bro, he's the most NBA ready prospect right now. He is. He is the most NBA ready. I'm not gonna lie to you. Maybe. Eh, Nah, the kid from Florida State, Edwards, he, he's NBA ready, bro. Don't, don't sleep on him. He's NBA ready. From from Georgia, Anthony Edwards? Whatever his is he they're like you know what I'm saying, whatever the fuck he's from. Yeah, That's but him. like he's playing with D'Angelo Russell and Carl Anthony Tell. Who Obi Top playing with? RJ Barry? RJ Barry gonna average like what? Max twenty? You still need more points after that? So Obi Top comes in and slides in. Rookie of the year right there. Ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. All right, all right, all right, all right. And he's okay. gonna accept that shit with some Tibbs on because he's really a New York nigga. He about to walk up for his award with some fucking heavy ass fifteen pound black Tims and wheat Tims on game days, yo. I'm ready. He gonna be dunking on niggas' heads. All right, let me I'm excited. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the Knicks this year, though. I'm just excited to see young talent for once, bro. That's all I'm excited for. Even if they lose all fucking eighty games that they're gonna play, whatever 72. the fuck the new seventy two. Even if they lose all 72, as long as they got young talent out there playing, I'm happy, bro. I don't need these old fogies that they paying 15 mil a year for. No, thank you. <coughs> Julius Randle. He's not an old fogie, though. <laughs> he's, he's not. He's, he's, not he's, still, he's still relatively young. He can improve, you know what I'm saying? Yo, Chris, you love Julius Randle, bro. I don't love him. He's just... Just Julius Randle, okay? He's just Julius Randle, okay? Sorry. He's, he's 25. I mean, he's young. He, he has a lot to, to, to fucking, you know what I'm saying, to go. Okay? At least he ain't from Duke. <laughs> <laughs> going, uh, going towards uh, Dan, I say LaMelo, look at him. So he goes off. He just has a, a season with the Hornets. <laughs> until, until he shoots twenty percent from three, and everybody's like, "Wow, why the hell did this kid go so high?" Yo, you just say Lamelo, son. Lamelo, Lamelo, Rookie of the Year, Rookie of the, the year. one that has the brother. Rookie of the Year. Yo, Dan, get your boy, bro. <laughs> get your boy, bro. <laughs> Rookie of the Year. He played. In, he played in fucking. Australia for like two years, bro. Of course he's gonna ball out over there. All right, Rick and Ian, calling him out. I'm so, calling him getting punched every shot that he takes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling that shit. That's, that's he gonna go for a layup. It's just <laughs> get that fucking weak ass shit out of here. I just I can't wait. I can't wait, dog. He's six nine, right? Six seven. Nick seven and some shit like that. I just can't wait for niggas to body his low ass, dog. He big, but he he little. I don't know. I don't like him, dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's your bold prediction, homie. Gonna get punched in the face at least once during the season. At least once. So at least, he, at least he's not as bad as his brother, though. He, his brother's the other one, Lonzo. Uh, Lonzo. But I mean, saying attitude wise, like at least oh. he doesn't have like. I feel like you can coach Lamelo. You can't coach Lonzo. I feel like I feel like he has too much of an ego. Like he has, he has more of his dad's ego. He has like he has like a quiet ego. Where he's just mad quiet, but you know, high key. Like he's like, yo, shut up, nigga. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, like that. Like he has an undertone to him. Versus I feel like the brother the brother doesn't have that much. But I don't like either three of them, so you all can go fuck themselves. <laughs> so Chris, who's who's your rookie of the year? Anthony Edwards still from Georgia? No, nah, he's from Florida State, bro. I thought you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Word. So that's our bold statements. We got the Lakers winning the chip. We got three different uh, rookie of the years, and we'll see what's going to happen from there. So can we go on to football? Of course, my sure. boy. Yo, like, who, where do you want to start? It's it's funny how Ethan disappeared for a second. Yeah, when we started talking about me. football, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I should, though, I, after that I, injury. I, yeah. Wait, I, want, I want to start there before we get into the games. Yeah, that was bad. Yo, bro. so for the people that don't know, um, unless you've been living under a rock, because there's no way you didn't hear about this, Joe Burrow tore his ACL, MCL, 
PCL and meniscus and has other structural damage to his knee. His whole thing, like, if this was his knee, it came out of place like this and then popped back in and, like, just tore his whole knee up. Like, they just got to cut his leg from the thigh just straight down and just give him a new leg at this point. Like, that knee is cooked. Yeah. That's pretty bad, Doug. That, uh, I mean, I saw the video. And then, like, as soon as I saw the video, not even to bring it back to, like, any sort of, you know, t- tie into life, but, like, I ended up touring my meniscus and my ACL playing, like, backyard football, like, at one of the big fields here. Bro. Literally the same thing happened. My knee said, and I had to come and stand up and go <laughs> put that shit right back in and walk home, dog. And I just saw that. I immediately, <laughs> yes, I walked home, nigga. I, I limped home for better words. Like, yo, it's, it's, bro, I saw that video. My man's knee said, <laughs> right back in, yo, that hurts, dog. That hurt, like, and there's like nothing you could do. Like you I was just gonna gotta... out. You said you walked home after that dog. I know your adrenaline must have been strong as shit for you to walk <laughs> home that day. Yeah, I was also like fucking fourteen, fifteen. So like, you know, you know, at that age, you really don't give a fuck. You just more scared about calling your mom and getting your ass whooped for getting hurt. Yeah, dead ass. So, yeah, I was man. more, I was more embarrassed about my mom picking me up at the fucking football field and her cursing me out from everybody. I was that was my more uh, worry right there than having a broken knee or whatever the hell it was. So. But yeah, bro, that that if you if you get a chance and you could hold your stomach, look at that video, dog. That was gross. So Ethan, let's get the, the Bengals fans perspective on this. Um what do you guys do now? We tank. That's it. <laughs> yeah, we, we gotta get an O line. We have to get an O line before he comes back. Yeah. So, I mean, who who do you think is the most like effect from this now? Like out of your offense, like who is this going to hurt the most now that Burrow's not there? The Ricky T Higgins, um, if I was AJ Green, I would want out. I'm sorry, I wouldn't even want to play with us. He's not a good quarterback anymore. Um, Mixon, he he had a pretty good year. He was hurt, but that that whole offense is just messed now. That's crazy. So we're we're actually talking about this before, because me and Chris were talking about it, and I brought it up to you. How long do you think he's going to be out for? Like, of course, this season, but I say he sits next season. I don't think he should push it at all. So you think he's coming back twenty twenty two? Yeah, twenty twenty one, twenty twenty two. Yeah, with a bionic knee or something, because he yeah. needs to be fully healthy. Oh no, not even twenty twenty one. They'll be. 2022, 2023. Yep. Word, damn. Yeah. I set him up for two years. Damn. So, this is actually the discussion I wanted to bring up now. Yo, what has a bigger reputation of ruining someone's, like, season? FedEx Field, where the Redskins and Washington football team have played, or MetLife this season? Like, if y'all playing and they tell you, yo, you got to play on one of these fields, like, which field you take it? My life. Yeah, I would say my life, too. Yeah, because, yo, I, I don't know what's going on in that field, dog, but there's just something with legs, and they just love having the most gruesome leg injuries on that field, dog. Like, met life, I might sprain the crap out of my ankle and be out for eight weeks at least, but, you know, I, I'll take that over a gruesome-looking injury any day. Yeah, Mm. That's Dak, Dak and Burrow within one season. Like, that's gross. Yeah. yeah. Alex Smith, RG3, like, all of them were on that field. Oh, I mean, it's not like my life stays any far away. I mean, who was it? Bosa, Garoppolo. Uh, he will, I think Garoppolo didn't, Garoppolo just sprained his shit over there, right? Yeah, like, bad, though. Yeah. Like. yeah. Uh, the, the San Francisco. Uh, what is it called? Running back. I don't know his name. Mostert. Or, Mostert t- tore his ACL over there. The other dude, too. Um, The other defensive end hurt his knee, too, that week. Did he? Yeah. Oh, shit. I like know Cam that. Newton slipping and sliding everywhere. Cam said one slipping and sliding. You have Jets injuries left or right on that field. That field been taking bodies this year. Yeah. So. Oof. 
But brighter note, let's go back to our game picks. This week was terrible, game pick wise. Um, so who's in first? Who's in first? Who's in first? Who's in first? So in first? we didn't announce this last week because Ethan wasn't here. But now let's announce this. Chris is in first at 103 and 56 and one. Ethan is in second with 159 and one. <laughs> and I'm in third with 98, 61 and one because I've had some real bad picks the last like two weeks. And this week did not help the situation. I was seven and seven. Chris was six and eight, and Ethan was five and nine. Yeah, this week I was telling, I told the group that this week. I was like, yo, last week, the week before, everything kind of went as expected. Everybody, everybody that was expected to lose, lost. This week was the complete opposite. A lot of upsets this week, a lot of interesting football, which is always good, but yeah, it so wasn't good for it wasn't good for our picks. Yeah, the only picks we got, honestly, like all three of us were the Browns, the Steelers, the Chargers, and the Chiefs. Because the Chiefs played the Raiders, we all picked the Chiefs. The Chargers picked the Jets, which, come on now. The Steelers played the Jaguars, come on now. And the Browns were playing the Eagles, come on now. Um, me and Ethan both had the Bengals. Chris had the Washington football team. Bengals were actually up until that Joe Burrow injury and just yeah. fell apart after that, which yeah. can you really blame them? Yeah. You know? I, pick, I picked the Bengals. No, you picked Washington. Oh, that's what I said. No, no, no. Me and Ethan picked Bengals. Oh, okay, okay. Um, me and Chris picked the Saints. Ethan picked the Falcons. That game was weird. You had yeah. Taysom Hill. Like, how do you not take over? Like, yeah. Julio I'll Jones. Yo, yo, don't even get me started on that man. Yo, don't, look, I'll save that for tomorrow. Don't even get me started on Julio Jones. Though that's that's a main reason why the Falcons <laughs> suck yesterday on Sunday. Yeah. Then me and Ethan both had the Texans. Chris, I don't know why you picked the Patriots. Um, let me get some reasoning behind that. I don't know. I like. I had a feeling that Cam Newton would start and stop fucking losing. Thought he was gonna, you know, pick it up. You know what I'm saying? They were saying Harris was gonna be like now the number one running back. He ran really good the week before. They were figuring out their rookie situation with the, the wide receivers. They, they were kind of breaking out. They were looking good. So I thought this was going to be the game that they solidify them coming back 100%. And now it wasn't. Yo. Which, I mean, they, I mean, it's not, they didn't really – it's not like they fell off the planet of the earth. It was a close no, no, game. No, 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 It was close. But it was I – thought, I thought this was going to be the game for them to really take over and solidify their spot after making it close last week. I mean, honestly, out of all the games, that might have been the most, like, 50-50 game on this – this whole list. Yeah. Thanks. Um, my favorite part of that game was watching Deshaun Watson run over Devin McCourty because it's fucked the Pats. Yo, he took that little boy out. <laughs> put that nigga to sleep. You talk about being physical right in the last two or three yards because a lot of quarterbacks would say, okay, I've gained enough. I'm not going to sacrifice my body. Put his shoulder down. That looked more like Cam Newton than Cam Newton. So, yeah, he used to be my mentor. Watch what I do. Um, Lions, Panthers, all yo. So this is crazy. We had a block of just all, all three of us getting all three games wrong between the Lions and Panthers, Titans and Ravens, Dolphins and Broncos. All three of us picked the Lions. All three of us picked the Ravens. All three of us picked the Dolphins. Um, that Lions game was crazy. Yeah. Shut out, yo. By the shut out, game. yeah. I caught a little bit of that game, but it looked like they ain't even. They didn't even uh, miss a roll. Without yeah. CMC, so or Teddy Bridgewater, he wasn't or Teddy. Yeah. Was yeah, they had PJ Washington from the XFL. XFL going off, you know? like what? So that's bad. I mean, the Titans though, the Titans Ravens game that game overtime. was overtime. That was actually a really good game. And Derrick Henry, man. Yeah, I was literally just gonna Derrick Henry dog like that. It, it, it just becomes such a like. A normal thing now, like just watching Derrick Henry just run little boys over and yeah. keep it moving. Him and uh, DK are just too built. Like that man, both of them are monsters. Yeah, and I, I know all of us rode the train with the with the Dolphins. We all yeah, got on that, that was that was yeah, they were just gonna beat the Broncos. <laughs> nah, <laughs> had a chance at the end though. If Fitz Magic came in and uh, he kind of shut everybody. This is why I'm on the bench. <laughs> Yeah. So. Then we all picked up – then we had the other block again of wrong games with the Packers and Vikings both losing. Vikings, I can't believe, lost to the Cowboys. And the Packers lost that heartbreaking game in overtime to the Colts where Valdez Scantley makes an amazing catch, puts him into overtime, and then says, yo, 
hold my beer, watch this, and just fumbles. Loses yep. the game. Loses the game for him. Yeah. Um, all had the Chiefs, and then I was the only one that picked the Rams against the Bucks, and that paid off big time. But that game was so wild. That game was, yeah. That second half. I didn't know that they were the leading. Uh, the Rams and Bucks are both leading in the second half scoring in the league. But literally number one and number two. I think the Bucks are one, Rams are two in how they, you know, efficiency in scoring in the second half. And it showed. I mean, so. Yeah. Can we can we talk about the elephant in the room with the Rams? And how What's much that? they missed Todd Gurley? Yeah. Yo, that running game cannot get going for the life of them. And it's crazy because Todd Gurley now with fucking Atlanta. Atlanta can't get it going himself. Like, he, he can't run the ball for shit over there. So It'd be crazy to watch stuff like that. always happens where, like, a team and a player separate and then you're thinking, oh, they're both going to be better without each other. And then you're watching and you're like, so, yeah, I did this for what? <laughs> yeah. Chris, how so, you feeling about the Bucks, bro? How, how you how y'all looking playoff wise right now? I haven't even looked at the standings. I don't think we're close to the playoffs, are we? After that loss, you guys yeah, are in, in the wild card, seven to four. Yeah. You're in the. I mean, it's kind of tough though because the divisions and all the the matchups and stuff, and the fact that you have lost some pretty big games now. Yeah. <laughs> Stats. Yeah, Brady in prime time games. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, literally, I was saying he's 0 4 this this season, right? With with prime time, or 0 and 3, whatever the fuck it is. 0 3 or 1 and 3, <laughs> something like three. that. But man, that was a really close game. If they would have pulled that off, you know, Those they would have sat. Yeah, they would have sat where they needed to. He so. had the interception at the end that killed ya. He had there was another Maybe. play that like he just completely overthrew somebody. Uh, I still got faith in them. I still got faith in the Bucks. You know what I'm saying? I think they'll be all right. You I'm trying to see. Them. I'm trying to see who they play these upcoming weeks. That's my. That's what I'm trying to look at right now. So let's see. They play the Chiefs this week. Um, Vikings, Falcons. Yeah, Vikings, Falcons, Lions, Falcons. So, I mean, the only real loss that's there is the Chiefs. Yeah. Yeah. Like realistically, we're going to talk. Yeah, because they could beat the Vikings, especially if the Vikings just lost the Cowboys. Um, <laughs> they definitely could beat the Falcons twice, and they could beat the Lions. So you're looking at they can, they really could end fucking what are they seven and four now? So they'll end eleven and five. It's not bad five. at all. Yeah, eleven and five. So they'll probably it's get the wild card. Yeah, easily. So, and that's if the I mean the Saints aren't losing so. Well, I mean, it also depends on what happens with the Cardinals and Seahawks, too, because that division is wild. Yeah. And the Saints are not losing at all. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So, do y'all want to y'all wanna bring up this argument back up? What's that? The Chiefs and Steelers argument we were having on what day was that? Sunday night? Saturday night? Yes, please. Yo, can y'all please tell me why y'all think that the Steelers defense is like that and the Steelers team is like that? Just because they're trying to know. Bro, you can't you can't lie and say their defense is not good, bro. All right, here's my here's my, my whole defense. point. My whole point was that not that the Steelers are gonna beat the Chiefs because I like the Chiefs too, but it's not gonna be a, a cakewalk where they're just gonna come and score thirty points. Yeah. Like it's not gonna it's not gonna be easy for them to just come and just beat them because they are. Once they click offense wise, like if they can get the running game going and they can get some play action going, Big Ben is damn near unstoppable no matter what defense it is. And defensive wise, you know, even if they've played shitty teams the first ten games, they've shut, you know, most of the shit down. So Nope. I don't know. I don't I'm not a believer though. I'm really not. Like I, I know the Chiefs de- like not the Chiefs defense. I know the Steelers defense is good enough. But the Chiefs' offense is just insane, dog. Like, they just have too many pieces that they could just plug in anywhere and everywhere they want on the field. Yeah. And they haven't even gotten crazy yet because you know come playoff, they're saving this come playoff time. They're going to do some crazy set with Le'Veon Bell and Edward Gillian in the backfield, and everybody's going to be like, yo, what the fuck is about to happen? Tyreek Hill's going to be out there with Sammy Watkins and Travis Kelsey. Like, who, who do you guard at that point? 
Sammy Watkins ass. So yeah, I was about to say Sammy Watkins is ass, but like you know that when it comes to like that one play you need from him for like 15 yards, he always makes that one play in a game, and that's all he's good for. Yeah, and so is Le'Veon Bell. Le'Veon Bell just started getting the the the, the rock now this week with that one touchdown he had. So I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like it may be another committee kind of situation where they're just trading off touches. I don't think they'll. I don't think they'll run ever a spread like that where they have them both in the back. I'm telling you, bro, come play. They're gonna save it for playoffs. They're gonna do it at least once in the playoffs. Uh, so, so Dan, uh, flip the script. Can the Steelers' offense kill the Chiefs' defense? I think they can. You think. They don't have a defense. Whoa, what wait, defense here, do the here, Chiefs have? Wait, wait, hear me out. But here's my thing. This is why I think. It's because I have less faith in the Pittsburgh Steelers' offense because they get off to really bad starts. That's a, yeah, That's what I said. They have to figure – like, they would have to figure out the run game. They'd have to, you know, get that going in order – because the only way Big Ben is fucking successful is with play action. If they have the run game and they can continue to run and then run a play action, then he starts throwing the ball, then, you know what I'm saying, there's no coming back from there. But if he starts off slow, then yeah, he can get stopped. But let's see. I still have more faith in, in Big Ben than I do the Chiefs defense. I don't know. I, I like I said, I don't trust this, this, the Chiefs defense at all. But the way I've seen the Steelers get out the last few weeks on red zone, because I have Juju Smith Schuster, so I'm heavily invested into this offense. They are very bad Bro. in the of games. Ju- if you have Juju Smith in, in fantasy, because I do, I have him in the other league, bro. Oh my God, dog. Yo, you. you... That is a, he's literally had one good week this whole year. It's Deontay's team, I'm sorry to say. Deontay Johnson, yeah, yeah, dog. Like, he's the new yeah. um, wide receiver one. Yeah. So, And if it's not him, it's Claypool. So. Yeah. Juju took a back seat real quick. Yo, yeah, thankfully, but... in one of my leagues, I have Tyree Kill, Tyler Lockett. Juju and John Brown. No, Robbie Anderson. I have Robbie Anderson as well in that league. So, luckily, I don't got to worry about Juju. Like, yo, he has been so bad. But, like I said, you can even see it with James Conner. Like, he just starts off so slow sometimes. But, yo, less than a minute. We'll leave it at that. We can definitely discuss it a little bit more with the weeks coming up. Um, Ethan, welcome back. Glad to have you back. Thank you, sir. And let's keep this rolling. Great episode. Let's keep it going. Peace. Peace.